helpful. Obviously, I kind of want to do the Anunnaki one because we, uh, we love talking about the Anunnaki. Uh, ex, oh, the, we're not experts. Self-proclaimed <laughs> experts of the Anunnaki. We watched a three-hour. Well, it's like broken up into many episodes, but <laughs> it's three hours. It's, it's a rock it's opera. It's a rock opera in, in Portuguese. Portuguese from Brazil. Uh, I really liked it. The people I tried to turn it on to were I loved like, it. Meh. we've watched it several times. Uh, you will see illustrated penises, so penis alert. Yeah, the Anunnaki love to naked fight with each other. That's like how they yeah. duel, they duel it out with their penises out. <laughs> you know, I feel like that's where maybe the like the greco-roman wrestling kind of came from they saw the anunnaki like getting down dicks out all oiled up and they're like yeah let's wrestle like the gods but that's not the important part of the anunnaki Uh, that's like a little it's very entertaining though highly recommend the brazilian rock opera about the anunnaki yes like three hours long though take it in stride you know start with the first one yeah definitely what's up i'm tristan I'm Ariana. Today, we're smoking blunts. We love blunts, uh, but not the tobacco ones. So we got this guy. It's a Twisted Hemp wrap. You'll be seeing a lot of these on these episodes. You should sponsor us, Twisted Hemp. We are your number one customers. It's true. <laughs> slash promoters. Right? Slash we tell everybody to get these. Uh, mainly because we're... I won't say we're cheap. We like a good deal. There's four. Four to a thing. For 99 cents. We're they normally taste getting delicious. Like, yeah, normally we're getting two. Tristan has a very easy time rolling them. They're moist. They're not dry. It's true. Excellent quality. Tastes delicious. We've tried many a hemp wrap at this point. Yeah, it's like not too dry. Some of them are a little dry and you gotta spend a lot of time, like, you know, like getting it moist with your breath. And whatever. Y'all, hey, you stoners out there, do you ever get a pre-roll that says no saliva on it? <laughs> They're out there. Um, you know, I... I, I <laughs> it's just silly. Like, I enjoy seeing that because it makes you think, you know, like, oh, is there saliva in this? A lot of, I mean, a lot of times when I'm rolling it, there is. Yeah. I'm not going to lie. But they must have like machines or, you know, they use those little. Yeah. Like, you know, people who have to send a lot of mail or whatever. Like my mom works for a company where they got to send out mail. And instead of licking all the packages, they have a thing where they're just like moistens it. Okay. Then... Yeah. That's probably what they use. Something similar. Today we got glass house farms at the house. We're smoking with all their sativa. Uh, Super Silver Haze. Although we are also expecting a delivery from our other favorite weed service. The Nug Club Box. Also sponsor us Nug Club because we love you and we send hella people your way. But yes, we're about to get our Nug Club Box, which will bring us a bunch more weed, a bunch more goodies. Yeah, you can order pre-rolls. flour, uh, concentrates, pre-rolls, or edibles. I think that's what they're doing. Anyways, this weed right here has 37.34% total cannabinoids with a 30.37% THC. The CBD got ripped off, as in I ripped the tag. Oh. (laughs) I don't know what That's what they get when they seal it, you know. Anywho, let's get, you know, let's get rolling on the mysteries here for today. It's going to be fun because it's going to be watching like some sort of video. Yeah. No research needed here. If you want to hear our interpretation of research, go check out the podcast, High Mystery, the podcast. And that's more like self. We got to do the research and go down the rabbit hole. And then we take you with us. Tristan's pretty up to date on like editing techniques and all things film industry. So I'm going to be asking his opinion on like whether the shit is edited or like how it could have been faked. Um, I'm just very intuitive and can see through a lot of the bullshit, so I'm looking forward to deciphering what we got. What we got. You can't go wrong with a little UFO. And here's the thing. UFOs have been real popular as of late, and in my personal opinion, I think there's a big gear up to uh, maybe a fake invasion or just like... We know they're gearing up for something. They're going to release... To the public here soon because there's, you know, stories coming out. Stories coming out. Fucking the Navy's releasing 
uh, redacted video of like all these UFOs. Plus, we don't need them to tell us, y'all. We, we, we know. know. Come on. We know. We, we don't know. need them to tell us, but they will eventually. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and play this bad boy. Okay. Let's see. Never before seen by me. Most people who study UFOs have probably heard something about the really amazing incident back in 1967 oh, yeah, in which some large glowing red object appears to have been uh, involved in the disabling of at least 10, maybe more, nuclear warheads over yes. at Armstrong Air Force Base we in know this story Montana. I'll get to that mystery. in a minute. Well, one thing I just want to point out <laughs> is that there are occasional uh, stories about UFOs engaging with nuclear missiles and weapons and at times doing damage to them or disabling them in one way or another. I do think Which I'm just going to say is fucking dope. Like you can't be a f you know, how are you how are they going to sell this as like an evil entity when they're like straight up like, you know, let's not kill everybody with these nuclear weapons. Like nuclear weapons is bad, okay? Yes, these aliens must have been good aliens, but we also know that a lot of them are bad. Well, it's and like all everything. There's they're bad. nice oh ones God, and there's bad ones. Is that nug club? We got to pause, take a nug club break. Hawk is on the way! We can wait a little bit longer for Hawk. I'll track him. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, you know, um, yeah, like, no, but use your use your intuition. Ask questions. And yes, fucking like absolutely. Suss out whether or not they're good or bad because some are good and some are bad. There are a lot who have hijacked the earth and your souls, but that's for another day. Oh, really, for for another day. <laughs> <laughs> we got nine minutes till Hawk arrives. Oh man, I think that this is a pretty common theme and. Probably true, but I would just point out, but just to put this in perspective, there's actually a lot of incidents where there is no UFO activity in connection to nuclear tests and the like. I mean, after all, from 1945 to the end of the 20th century, there were over 2,000 detonations Damn. of nuclear weapons during tests all over planet Earth. Disgrace. Over 2,000. It's unbelievable. Disgraceful. Um, and it's not clear that most of those were connected with UFOs in any way. In fact, I'm sure most of them were well, not. You know, they had to give us and time to be like, oh, no, you guys. Whoever is behind okay, the UFOs were not able to stop all of those Should detonations. Should have brought our extended clip. So Next time. the interaction between whatever these UFOs are and our nuclear technology, to the extent that it happens, it seems to be I mean, that's just like very an particular record, and but... very specific oh, from God, time to time. My eye, the the most fucking horrible now, there are a couple of really <laughs> interesting cases that we know it's about in which UFOs We're like hot boxing definitely right seen right now, in connection with our nuclear weapons. And, you know, in a way that just can't be seen by chance. One of these interesting sightings happened at Minot Air Force Base in North Dakota on August 24th, 1966. This is a really interesting one. So you have an airman on the base who's the first one to report this. He sees a very, very high multicolored light. Way, way Whoa! Uh, he makes That's his report crazy. and a team is actually sent out to where he is. They come take a look. They see what he sees. And then all of them notice a second object. This is like a white object and it's maneuvering uh, below the clouds. They can see it very, very well. It's fast and they contact base radar, which is also able to track this object. And in fact, they, they see visually and base radars tracking so yeah, the radar dude, like so object much changing its altitude, yeah. uh, going as high as 100,000 feet, according to the we'll radar, oh, and descending here? What's very rapidly, and then going back up and descending. Every time it would descend, uh, the uh, Air Force again. officers operating the missile silo below the ground, minutes. we're talking they 60 feet below the ground, <laughs> would notice that the radio you don't get transmission like would be uh, yeah. would static, <laughs> would be jammed. They wouldn't be able to communicate. So this thing was clearly <laughs> able to interfere with radio communications. Now, eventually, this object descended very low. In fact, it appeared to land, or at least go so back to go back. Right. 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 Pause it. Go back a little bit. This is important. It's weed related. 
Here, how about we just pause and then we'll sure. come back with after Hawk yeah, arrives with, with more weed. <laughs> Actually, pretty high. We're back. I'm pretty high too. We're back and we're focused now. Hawk arrived. <laughs> Nothing to distract us from watching this UFO video. Do you want to finish it? I mean, oh, it's we almost time to watch it. Finish it? No, 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 no. I'm too bougie for that. For sure. That'll be between <laughs> me and you later, bud. No, you're not, you're not going to read smart about that. Uh, I did roll this little guy to get us through the rest of this. Which we have quite a bit to get through. No, I guess we watched like two and a half minutes out of the five minutes, so like half. Well, for you people, it'll be like no time has passed. That's true. So it's not like I need to refresh you on what's magic. what's happening. Are they gonna show me like some more UFO footage? Well, now we're talking about a specific case. You know, they're, we're at this base. Dude okay. saw some shit, called his buddies. They seen it. Okay. They had it called in on radar. They seen it. Everyone's corroborating everyone's story. Oh, yes. Okay. Yes, yes, yes. All right. And away we go. Uh, below the clouds, they can see it very, very well. It's fast. And... They contact base radar, which is also able to track this object. And in fact, they, they see visually and base radar is tracking on the radar, this object changing its altitude, uh, going as high as 100,000 feet, according to the radar, and descending uh, very rapidly, and then going back up and descending. It's Every time it ride. would descend, uh, the uh, Air Force officers operating the missile silo below the ground. Is it? You've never rolled a terrible ground. joint in your fucking life. What's happening? Transmission would be uh, I tried to do it small. Would be jammed. They wouldn't be able to communicate. So this thing was clearly able to interfere with radio communications. Now, eventually, this object descended very low. In fact, it appeared to land, or at least go very, very low to the ground, about 10 or 15 miles south of the base location. So as a result of this, the base sends a security alert team to the site to investigate what this thing could possibly be. And we have a report from what they actually saw. They get to within a certain distance of this, and what they see is this reddish, glowing red object on the ground or just hovering above the ground. So we're, this is like right out of a Steven Spielberg movie here. The object descends very, very low. The truth is the always hidden in the ground media 10 or, 15 or in miles movies. From the, base. <laughs> the base sends a security team in the direction of that just to investigate. And they do see an object. This is really kind of amazing. I'm gonna read from the report. When the team was about 10 miles from the landing site, static disrupted radio contact with them. Five to eight minutes later, the glow diminished and the UFO took off. Another UFO was visually sighted and confirmed by radar. The one that was first sighted passed beneath the second. Radar also confirmed this. The first made confirmed. for altitude toward the north and the second seemed to disappear with the glow of red. In other words, what you get from this report is that the team gets to within about 10 miles of the object. They see it, it's glowing. Their radio is completely disrupted, jammed, static. And before they can get any closer, this object takes off and they see this whole display. They see the object, they see another object. There's all of these visual maneuvers that they are noticing that are correspondingly being tracked by the base radar. That was it? That was it. Oh my God, they barely showed me shit. Yeah, it was all like, you know, stock footage, implied stuff. Yeah. And then, it, but then the story, you know, his. No, I, I need to see more footage. All right. I mean, we'll, we'll get into that in future episodes yes. of like, <laughs> you know, I'm sure we'll come across videos where there's like more, more footage. footage. This is just like a substantial report. Yes, it's very it, substantial. Was corroborated by radar, all the people, uh official statements I mean, I made. It. I believe it. 
But yeah, so I fuck, I believe in that story. I definitely do. Because definitely do. my point that I was trying to make was that you're not trying to be like, oh yeah, dude, like I want to go make a report that I saw a UFO. Yeah. You know, like that's not going to gain you like respect or traction in that field necessarily. Like, mm-hmm. you know? Yeah. So even if one guy was like, yeah, I want to make up a bullshit story. And then everyone else was like, you know, mass psychosis or whatever. And was yeah. like, oh, he was freaking out about it. So like, it must have happened. And I was part of it. And I was there. Yeah, I saw it. Yeah. No. The radar, the radar doesn't yeah, seem to. The radar guy's like, God damn, my job's so boring. Like. Sure. Oh, what's yeah? Stuff it. happened. I'm useful. No, radar is super useful. Yeah, yeah. They they make sure that they sense missiles headed our way and stuff. Or do they? That's for another day. Like, uh, I'm sure one day we'll get into the Philadelphia experiment where they were supposedly under the guise of trying to make ships invisible to radar by using magnets. Was that the one they had the show on? On FX? You know which one? No, that's, that was Project Blue Project Book. Blue Book. <laughs> which was also about aliens. That was a good show. Uh, well, yeah, dudes and dudettes, let us know what you thought of it. Like, yeah. Do you believe it? Do you not believe in it? Did you smoke with us? If so, what were you smoking on? Yeah. Did you get as high as I did? It, it had been a minute since we've hotboxed a room like this. Yeah. So, but, but thank you for yes. joining us today. I'm Tristan. I'm Ariana. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you next time. We'll get high and we'll do another video. Woo! You're just going to have to choose because... I'm too high to pick from all these different <laughs> options. Uh, or what we should do next time, maybe this will incorporate this next time. Tristan and I always have a hard time deciding we'll just get a what we're going to do. Um, whether it's like where we're going to eat, what we're going to do. Um, we like to flip coins. Here's we, the thing. We also like to put the options in a hat. and 90% of the time, of the I hat. legitimately do not have an opinion. <laughs> Yes. She has a secret opinion that yes. she doesn't want to say, so the It's the not coin, that I don't want to say it, I just don't know it until, until the coin flip I'm happens, pushed. And then you're like, oh, the, I didn't want exactly, that. Exactly, the coin flip <laughs> helps actually decide. All right, um, I'll just pick one. Okay, just pick one.